I'm Sarah Alloway. I'm a water efficiency manager for Liberty and today I'm going to show you how we are going to make a groundwater model. So to start with, you're going to need a clear bin, a smaller clear bin with holes in the bottom, a pump, some sort of tubing, I'm using PVC pipe, some sort of earth material, I'm using rock but you can use sand, uh, soil, mulch, whatever you have, some tape, and then of course some water. So to go ahead and make your model, and you're gonna take your little bin that has the holes in the bottle and you're just gonna place it inside our model. So then take some tape, and you're gonna go ahead and put that tube in a corner of the model. The tape basically just holds it in place. And then you can put your pump inside the tube. With your earth materials, you're gonna put it inside the model. And you'll move that around. All right, so our model is just about complete. But as we're looking at a model, we are looking at the groundwater system. If you look at our model, from this side to this side represents miles and miles of land. And from the top to the bottom represents hundreds of feet down into the ground. Keep in mind that we're looking at a really big cross section of the ground underneath us. Now, we're looking at how groundwater moves, but to get there, we have to have water in our model. So how do we get groundwater to actually have water in the ground? Well, first, it has to rain or some sort of precipitation. So I'm gonna take our water and I'm gonna go ahead and make it rain on our ground. Now I want you to look down at our earth materials and see what happens when we make it rain on the ground. So as you can see, there's now a water line here in the groundwater. So that's gonna mark where our groundwater is at. So what happens is it's going to rain or have some sort of precipitation and gravity is gonna pull that water down through these earth materials and percolate into our groundwater system. And now we have our groundwater. All right, so now that we have our groundwater in the model, we're gonna go ahead and turn our attention to this tube. And this tube is gonna represent a well. So this pump within our well represents a pump. It's not what an actual pump looks like, but it works really well for this model. So you're gonna be able to use this pump to pump water out from the ground, and we can go ahead and see what happens. So we'll pump some of that water out. And I want you to keep an eye on the water level in the earth materials as I pump out water, the groundwater is going down. So we pump out that water from between the spaces in the earth materials, and then we can take that water and to deliver it to our communities. We're gonna turn our attention to the clear bin that we put in our model. This clear bin is going to represent a lake or some sort of surface water. So what I want you to do is look at the earth materials. I'm gonna make it rain only in the lake, and I want you to see what happens when it rains there, and only on the lake. So I'll make it rain. And do you see what's happening? We have this water line level that's actually going up by it raining just in the lake. Now, how is that possible? Well, when you think about what's at the bottom of our lakes and rivers and all of our surface water supply, there's gonna be earth materials, just like what we have in our model. Well, gravity can go ahead and pull that water from our surface water and have it percolate down into the ground and it can become groundwater. So now that you can see that there's water here in our lake, I'm gonna go ahead and pump again, and I want you to keep an eye on the lake levels to see what happens. So you should be able to see that as I'm pumping out the groundwater, that lake level is starting to go down. So that's a really important idea when you think about our overall water cycle and water supply, that these two are connected. So if I was to keep on pumping, and I didn't add any more precipitation, there was no more rain happening, what do you think would happen over time? We're gonna run out of water in our groundwater aquifer. So what Liberty does is we're really proactive about things like reuse, recharge, and conservation so that during times when we're getting less precipitation, we're still really resilient and able to provide water reliably and safely. Thank you for taking the time to build a groundwater model with me. If you're interested in our conservation programs or resources or just want to learn more about your water, please visit libertyenergyandwater.com.